times are tough, when you feel alone, tired, broken, or defeated. This is when you need real hope, to be a part of something bigger than yourself, to have a community that carries one another's burdens, to join with neighbors arm in arm to make a difference. And you can find that and so much more right here in church. A place to belong, to be renewed, where you can find support and answers to life's deepest questions. And most importantly, hope. The hope that can only be found in Christ. So welcome to church. Expect great things because hope is here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Wow, I hope you are ready to receive from God today. We are in a season, I believe, of uh, transition. And I think we have transitional seasons every so often. And I truly believe that we are in a, a spiritual uh, season of transition. And um, whenever we're in transition, we have a great sense of hope. At least we look for hope. And if we don't have hope, we want to have hope. Amen. So um, welcome. Welcome to Back to Church Sunday. And I'm here to tell you today that hope is here. Amen. Hope is here. God has so much uh, that he wants to reveal. And believe it or not, God is still on the throne. He is still in charge. He is still doing miracles. And he is waiting to do great works in our lives. So um, he has plans for us. All righty. So let's go ahead and open up in prayer. And then uh, I will share what I believe God has for us today. Gracious God, we humbly come to your throne of grace and we thank you for yet one more day, a day that you have blessed us to see. Uh, we thank you for giving us health, for giving us strength. We thank you, dear Lord, for um, new beginnings. We thank you for transition. We know, Lord, that in the midst of all of it, it it's hard to, to, uh, to enter into new beginnings at times or even process through the period of transitions in our lives. But God, we know that you are the one who holds on to us. We thank you for your word that says you will never leave us, nor will you forsake us. And so we pray today, Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak through me. Say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. Move how you want to move. We pray for those who are sick, who are shut in. A lot of us are, feel shut in, Lord, because of this whole COVID thing. But Lord, help us to find ways to, to love on one another and to encourage one another in the midst of it all. And then please, God, come meet us at the point of our needs. Let your healing virtue flow through our bodies from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. And then use us, oh God, greatly for the gospel of Jesus Christ and the upbuilding of your kingdom. We pray all of this in your mighty matchless name. Amen. And for those that don't, of you that don't know me, I am Pastor Deborah. I am the pastor here at Mountain Creek Christian Fellowship, and I'm really glad that you're here today. So we are today going to talk about hope for the weary. Hope for the weary. Are you tired? Um, how's your energy? I know me personally, I have been, and I don't glorify the enemy. I will not, but I definitely have been under spiritual attack in my, attack in my body. And um, 
to the point of just definitely a sinus infection, low energy and all kinds of stuff going on. But nonetheless, God has given me the strength to continue to press on in the midst of it all. Still got to take care of responsibilities and get them done. So pray for your pastor, pray for Deborah. And um, I'm praying for you. All right. <laughs> so let's get started. Hope for the weary. Hmm. Today is Back to Church Sunday. And basically, Back to Church Sunday is an annual event, as it were, or annual day where um, we come, we encourage folks to come back to church. We come to church and we encourage others who maybe have not ever attended or maybe have kind of slipped away and, and may kind of want to come back and maybe not, but we encourage others to, to come to church. And even though we can't convene in person, we are able now to convene um, uh, virtually. So I'm glad that you're here. We were created by God to live a healthy cadence in life. I've been listening to the um, Bible experience. Um, I downloaded the app on my phone and I love it because it is God's word. It's, just, it's the Bible and there are, it, it is in a more of a, I guess you could say an action type um, format where you can hear sounds and the voices change and you just really get a, a visual in your head of what it actually felt and looked like when God was speaking and when different people were interacting with him um, when the Bible was being lived out. And so, um, but one of the things is that that's, that was really crystal clear when God created Adam and Eve, um, the plan was to live in the garden and, and be free, be free of, of sickness, disease, um, just live a, a fruitful life and to multiply. Um, but we live now, fast forward to today, we live a life that is far from that in a lot of ways, <laughs> of course. Um, many of us are living without any margin in our lives. We can't say no. We live with a harmful drive to achieve, to strive, to get ahead. And we can't slow down. We are addicted many times to just being busy. And Jesus offers us a gift of rest. The rest that's found in grace that does not demand us to jump through hoops. I think about um, the lyrics of the song that I shared with you um, last Sunday at the end of service, Hold On To Me. And it talks about being underneath the weight of expectation or underneath the, being in desperation, underneath the weight of expectation, wow. So many times that is what it, it feels like in life that we, we really do as much as we try, we don't necessarily say, oh, okay, I'm going to get up and I'm just going to feel my day and I'm going to be stressed out and tired by the end of the day. I'm going to drag into bed and I'm going to do that over and over and over. We don't verbally say that. We don't verbally plan to do that. But there's so much going on right now that many of us are living lives that are overwhelming. The rest that Jesus author, offers to us is unmerited favor. It's for anyone who wants it. This grace is best experienced in community, right? So here we are back to church. We learn from Jesus and we learn from one another. I invite you to absorb what God has for us today, this Sunday. And um, allow your weary mind, if you are weary, your weary soul to just enter into his rest. Make this declaration. 
I don't have to live each day so exhausted by simply trying to keep up. I can allow others to help me. Make that declaration to yourself. I don't have to live each day so exhausted by simply trying to keep up. I can allow others to help me. Hebrews 13 reminds us of God's constant hold on us. Hebrews 13, five, New International Version. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Remember this, you are a human being, not a human doing. And then try this, try this practice. Practice saying no and receive the grace of God while investing in relationships that make you healthy. And what I mean by that is, and I'm just gonna, let me go ahead and just, just put myself out there. I'm just gonna say it. For years, and I mean, this has been my entire walk with Christ. I have had the challenge of not saying no when I know that I, I can and I probably should. And so the biggest part of it is I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't want to, I don't want anybody to think that I'm not there for them. But what has happened over the years has been I've trained people how to treat me. Deborah will do it. Deborah will come through. She's got it. You're my rock. Oh, I've heard it all. And people may mean well. But God's doing a transition in my life and in yours too. That's saying, enter into my rest when it's time for you to rest. And if you want to invest in healthy relationships, there are times when you're going to have to say no to certain people, certain times, certain places, in certain situations. Trust the Holy Spirit to lead you. So I talked about today being back to church and there's, there's churches all over the country that are um, now meeting and they're, um, people are coming back to church. Um, there's a lot of us have, who have not been able to worship um, in person. I know we have been virtual here at Mountain Creek for well over a year. And um, I'll tell you, we're weary. <laughs> it, it is, let's just, just be real. Um, but the idea of us, of us coming together today is to start rekindling, rebuilding, um, bringing a, a sense of hope and encouragement together. So this series that we're in, we're starting a brand new series called, it's called Hope is Here. And we find that the greatest need that we have in our lives after the year that we've experienced is a sense that there is, a, um, people need a lot of hope in this world. Some of us are struggling with doubt, our faith and the things that we um, hold on tightly to are feeling very uh, wobbly and unstable. Um, we're dealing, many of us with feeling broken. Many of us are experiencing pain. And this is all over the country and all over the world. And so can we all just agree that we need hope? It reminds me of a story about a man attending a little league baseball game. The, ch the little children were all on the field at the dugout and they were playing their hearts out. It was only the first inning and the score was already 16 to zero. One team was losing in a landslide. A man walked up to the dugout of the losing team and asked one of the little boys if he was discouraged about the score. Had he lost hope? 
The little boy looked at him in a puzzled way and said, why would I be discouraged? We haven't even gotten up to bat yet. There's always hope. I think about that. Children, they are often so concrete in their thinking. <laughs> Beautiful. We're not up to bat yet. I'm saying to you, if you're feeling like you're hopeless, we are not even up to bat yet. So that's one way to look at it. Um, the church throughout history has literally had the audacity to hope. We just, we are, that is one of our characteristics. And it stems from the victory that is found in Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus, not only did he come into this world in, a, in the most humblest way, but then he, um, he worked as just a regular carpenter down to earth. Then he died on the cross for us. And then what did he do? He, did, he beat all of it. He rose from the grave and is seated at the right hand of the father today. His witness, his example gives us hope. He didn't come. We could say, well, he was God in the flesh. He was man in the flesh as well. And that's what he took. He took the, the everything as man in the flesh. He didn't quit. He had hope. Even when he was on the cross and he had spoke out, it sounded so hopeless. Oh, Father, my God, why have you forsaken me? Nonetheless, he carried it through. He gave us a great example of persevering in hope. In the gospels, Jesus was always offering hope to those around him. Crippling disease, an oppressive government, a physical and spiritual hunger or an evil attack. Jesus would meet people right where they were. Jesus is here. So hope is here. Jesus was there. Hope was there. Jesus is here. Hope is here. Hope is here, y'all. So let's just talk about some main points that we know are true facts. One fact is life is hard. It is. I have a saying. You probably heard me say it. Any person that's lived past the age of five probably needs counseling. I mean, life is just... It, it, it can be very difficult. And there are times when we need a reminder that hope is here. Uh, circumstances can leave us feeling hopeless, weary, tired, worn out. Some of us may be waiting for a diagnosis. Some of us may be trying to pay off bills. Others may be trying to save a marriage. We're constantly praying about COVID, the people either dying or sick or praying God end it all in the pandemic. We're trying to grow spiritually. There was a, a NFL coach named Vince Lombardi and he once said, fatigue makes cowards of all of us. And I can't necessarily know if I agree with that much of a strong word, but I will say this, Fatigue will make you want to just say, I'm done. <laughs> I quit. Can't take it no more. Jesus was aware of the tendency of people to shoulder heavy burdens that would cause them to lose hope. Jesus was not caught off guard by that. Jesus spoke to his followers about when John the Baptist's faithfulness was weakening. Yeah, John the Baptist, who was out there preaching, out and just, I mean, roughing it. He was seriously sold out for the gospel. But even his faith got weak. He, be, he, was, he, there was, he was at a time when he was wondering whether or not Jesus was really the Messiah. When he, once John the Baptist got locked up, he wondered, have I been doing this in vain? But Jesus speaks in this circumstance and it's in Matthew 11. 11, 28 through 30. 
New International Version. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is doing a couple of things in this passage. First of all, he's acknowledging that life is heavy. He's not in denial about it. We live life without margin. We are hard on ourselves. We work hard to keep up with others around us and then we get weary. Jesus is normalizing this for us. We shouldn't feel bad when we, when we feel crushed by burdens. I think sometimes when we're feeling crushed by burdens, you know, something has come upon us that we've had no control, maybe a sickness. I, I'll use the example of myself, feeling having this sinus infection all week. I literally had to keep fighting off that this is not your fault. <laughs> you, 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 you know, I want to do more. I want to get it done. I can't even get out my lift my head because it feels like rocks is in it. And then I'm feeling guilty about that. What? I mean, God says, no, <laughs> I get that. We should not feel like a failure. When we do, we often will shy away from God. You know, sometimes when we feel like we're a failure and we're not giving it 110 and we're not just up and doing it, oh, I'm up, I'm splattered, I'm good, and everything is wonderful. Then we, a lot of times we'll be uh, down and feel guilty and then shy away from God. Mm. But this is the time when God gives us the invitation to come to him. Jesus also offers a solution. He tells us to exchange his yoke for ours. So we get to cast our cares upon him and then we get to take his yoke upon us. And what is his yoke? His yoke is easy. His burden is light. You see a yoke, uh, actually in, in, a, in a tangible sense, what people use it for is a harness, right? That a farmer uses to attach to the livestock. And this livestock pulls a cart in the field. And then the yoke would help keep the livestock in the way that the, the farmer wanted them to go. And then the animal would submit to that, that yoke. There are some people in Jesus's audience who were submitting to a way of life that was low, was law-based. And there's a difference. It was hard. It was religious. It was legalistic, right? And we often do that. I'm going to earn the. Um, I'm going to earn God's favor. I'm going to earn God's love. No, I'm going to pray ten times on my knees. I'm going to say, "I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus." Fifteen times in a row. I'm going to earn it. But it's performance based driven. God does not require that of us, and that's not what we need to succeed in life. The yoke. Jesus is offering is one of grace, mercy, compassion, and love. One yoke can cause people to become weary. The other causes people to find peace. He invites us to remove those yokes that are causing us to be weary and heavy laden, take them off of our necks and place his yoke because it says it's easy and it's light. Another point, is your yoke or a question, is your yoke crushing or is it life-giving? Jesus offers hope for the weary by reminding us that our value is not found in how well we hold it together when things get tough. Right. Superman, I have a, or superwoman, I have a big S on my chest and look at it here, let me rip it off and show you. No. Mm -mm. Our value is not found in how well we hold it together or how we compare it to other people. Ooh, look at them over there. They have it all together. Oh, that cute little family. 
perfect little family. They probably never fight, never argue, never have issues. Our value comes from the love that Christ gives us through his grace. Remember that. That's where your value comes, from his love. I remember when I was in my early walk with Christ and um, I was struggling with forgiveness. I had been emotionally deeply wounded, deeply. And one day I was sitting in church and I wasn't realizing that I was carrying this heavy burden. I, 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 this issue had happened. I knew I was hurt behind it. I was going to church and, you know, okay. But I was at a, a point in my life when I wanted to experience more intimacy with God. There was just this longing to just, I need more. I need more intimacy. But I was so angry. I was angry at what had been done to hurt me. I was, I was angry about that very deeply. And there was a minister who was ministering to us in church and she was walking up and down the aisles. Very powerful woman of God, very anointed. Um, and I mean, this was, this was one of, she was a prophet. <laughs> she could read your mail, honey. But she was walking up and down the aisle and just as she was getting near my spot, she knew whatever God showed her. She didn't say, didn't look at me, <laughs> but she got right near and she was saying, and she says like this, she kind of, she kind of pauses, she stops. She says, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. And immediately I just burst into tears. I was so, and then I was crying uncontrollably. I was trembling. I was crying. I didn't, it was so hurt. And I had been holding on to it so tight and I wanted God so much, but he was breaking me and saying, let it go, Deborah, let it go. And I just weeped and weeped and weeped. And I was so cleansed and I was able to let it go. I let go of that stronghold of protection. Did you know that we could have a stronghold of protection? That's usually what strongholds are anyway. Mechanisms we've built up to defend ourselves. You're not gonna do that again to me. I got, we've got a wall, wall way up here. You won't do that again. And wow, I can't get through that wall. I can't get through it. And no one can get to me, but I want love and I want Jesus. If you find yourself weary today, whether because of circumstances you cannot control or situations that you may have gotten yourself into and you want to get out of and you need help and hope for today, I wanna offer you hope for a better today, a better tomorrow, a better every day. Hope for purpose, hope for, for a clean, safe slate, hope for peace and hope for rest. It's found in Jesus. When hope, when Jesus is here, hope is here. When Jesus is here, hope is here. What's interesting about the illustration of Jesus's yoke is that a wooden yoke would not be typically worn on a single cow. It would have a tandem with a second cow. So they would work together. They would work together. The reason that Back to Church Sunday is so important each year is that we find hope when we recognize that we do not have to live life alone. We can have somebody that will yoke up with us and help carry our burden, help, help us move forward in life. And then the church carries one another's burdens. We do. Paul is writing to the church in Galatia about the importance of living in community. 
with one another. He is making his comments in light of the struggle that it is to avoid, that's to avoid the sin in life. So people were struggling with that. But he makes a statement that when lived out, puts us in line with the invitation of Christ to live his way. Galatians 6.2, New International Version. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Isn't that interesting? By carrying another's burdens, you're fulfilling the law of Christ. When we're willing to meet the needs of others, when we come to their aid with joy, when we do that, we offer them hope. Burdens call, come in all shapes and sizes. Some burdens are self-inflicted, but we help each other shoulder these burdens by offering grace, forgiveness, and a willingness to help navigate a better way. Some burdens happen to us Sickness, an unexpected loss, a job loss, something that's devastating. This tears up our whole household. But we can carry each other's burden, burdens by becoming a listening ear, bringing a meal, meeting a financial need. There's so many ways. Recently, our, our, in our community, there was a horrible apartment building fire. And a lady, and this is true, this was a lady who was um, renting a unit in this apartment building. And it was a, it was a horrible uh, fire. The fire was um, so bad that the, everybody that was there, I guess mostly everyone was home when it hit. Um, people were crawling under in crawl spaces to get away and jumping out of windows and, um, Pretty much the building just was gone. Everything was gone. And it was not only did this woman lose everything in the, in the fire, um, she suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. And it was just so traumatizing. She hadn't experienced seeing folks that close to death and all that was going on. I share that story with you to say that I know that Mountain Creek, and this is not to toot our horn, but but this is to give an example. Mountain Creek um, jumped into help immediately. And the woman was so blessed by what was given to her. We sat and we talked and she shared about the, the people that she spends time with, which are um, unique in how many, so many different ways as we all are but how she is the one who they listen to. She's the witness, she's the light. And so we thank God that she can be used by her unsaved friends, even in the midst of all the trauma and the tragedy and whatever else um, she experienced. You see, wherever there is a lack of hope in our community, the church is called to help carry the burden because the church is here, Jesus is here. And because Jesus is here, hope is here. Here's the good news. When we love one another in this way, we fulfill the most basic law that Jesus required. You remember what that was or what that is? We love God with our whole heart. And we, in turn, love our neighbors as ourselves. Jesus said all the law of the prophets hung on these two things. That sounds like hope to me. When we invest in the relationships God gives us within the church, we find help 
in living within the margins. And some of these relationships, when we talk about within the church, some relationships may not be directly within the church. You see, we look at many times a church being the building or one, you know, a, a place that we go to, but we are the church. So that means in our neighborhoods, that means on our jobs, that means as we're walking up and down the streets, that means at the grocery store. We are the hope of Jesus. Sometimes we need to say no in, when we help. Sometimes we need to say no. We can, we can help in that way too. It just depends on the situation and the circumstance. No to things that may occupy our time, our attention, our resources, and they're either done because we are trying to fix it or we are trying to make our own uh, judgments or make it be the way we think it should be. But sometimes no just simply means, no, let me let God do what he wants to do in the life of, my, the life of this person and in my own life. Sometimes we need someone to remind us that we are loved by God and that is enough. That's enough. So are you weary today? Are you burdened by life? Come to Jesus and find rest. You don't have to do it alone. We are all in this together and that gives us hope. So again, I offer you this invitation. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you're saying, ah, I think so, then let's pray this prayer. Or if you're saying no, but I want to, or if you're just saying no, let's pray this prayer together. Heavenly Father, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you today Acknowledging you as Lord, Jesus Christ, I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose from the grave, that I might have eternal life. I now ask you to come into my heart to save my soul, to be my God. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you, Jesus Christ, are Lord. Now teach me, Lord, how to walk in the steps you've ordered for my life. I am new in you, Christ. Amen. Amen. So I pray that, um, hey, you know what? If you would do me a favor, if in fact you have made that confession today and you know that you just asked Jesus into your life, whether it be that you have recommitted your heart to him, um, or you've asked him to come in for the first time, will you please in message me? It's easy. If you're here on Facebook, if you get on Facebook, in message me. If you're not on Facebook, you can always email me. Pastor at mountaincreek.org. If you can't remember that, go to our website and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But I would love to pray with you and to walk with you and to just make sure that you know you have some folks in your corner, all right? And if you're weary, I wanna hear from you. If you're tired, let's shoulder each other's burdens. I've shared my stuff with you, share your stuff with me. <laughs> yeah, it's not about that, but I'm just saying that is really what we do. Okay, all right. And then don't forget, um, next Sunday, come back.
we'll talk um, again about hope is here next week. We'll talk about hope for the broken. Hope for the broken. Hope for the, the following week, hope for the underdog and then hope for the doubter. So God has some good word for us. Part two is next Sunday. So come back and join me. Okay. Thank you. I have some questions for you to consider based on what I've shared today. Um, first of all, number one, do you find yourself in need of hope? And what I mean by that is sometimes we want to hope for something or we are just hopeless and we need some hope. <laughs> if so, what are the circumstances? Two, is it difficult for you to ask for help when you need it? If so, do you know why? It's an area I struggle in. Very sick this past week but I was so busy trying to get everything done. I wasn't, couldn't really stop. I did ask one person and they did, they brought me a meal. But when, we, when is it difficult for you to ask for, for help and why? Three, how might you help carry the yoke of another who is in need? How might you help carry someone's yoke? Think about those that you know who are in need. And then four, in what ways have you help shoulder another's burden. What have you done in the past? Share that, think about that. And then five, how might you receive hope in a situation that seems impossible? There are some situations in the lives of some people that I love dearly. And these lifestyles and these choices and these different situations that they're in often, often, um, it's just like, are they, it, are, is it possible that, that they're going to receive from God? Is it possible that they're going to, to be able to spend eternity with him? These are questions I ask sometimes. How might you receive hope in a situation that seems impossible? Okay, so our call to action this week, again, is to invite folks to church, invite them to church or a or a connection group, okay? And I'll share the connection groups with you. Um, we've talked about the hope is here and I've already shared that with you. Now I would like for you to go to the website, go to the website, <laughs> go to the website, go to the website and get your answers. Okay, go to the website. While you're there, submit your prayer requests. Submit your prayer requests, whatever you need healing for, or whatever you might have on your heart, or maybe there's friends or families or neighbors or somebody that you know needs prayer. Submit your prayer requests. Very simple. Go online and, the, and click the praise prayer square and there it is fill in what you need it's very easy and also your praises if you have praises that you want to share of what god has done we love to hear praises okay and then our connection groups <clears throat> are sundays at 10 5 we have our meet and greet 10 5 to 10 25 you can come and meet folks that maybe you have not met, or maybe you have, or maybe just the time, you know how we used to